Hi there, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Joe, and I'm here with ERWP, or the Elbow River Watershed Partnership. I just want you to take a second to consider what comes to mind when you think about the Elbow River. Maybe you've explored near the headwaters at Elbow Lake Campground, or perhaps you've seen its beauty at Elbow Falls, or relaxed at Sandy Beach. There is so much to explore within the Elbow River Watershed. I'd like to acknowledge that the Elbow River Watershed is within Métis Region 3 and Treaty 7 Territory, which is the ancestral land of the Blackfoot Confederacy, including the Siksika, Pikani, and Kainai. It is also home to the Sutana Nation and the Iahe Nakoda. These communities are the original stewards of these amazing landscapes, and they have been protecting water quality since time immemorial. When we think of a river, we often think of the surface water, what we can see, like charging rapids and waterfalls. But it's also important to consider the groundwater that we don't see, because the two are inseparably connected, and if we impact groundwater quality, it can have a direct impact on the quality of surface water. My hope is that during this presentation, you'll focus on the river we don't see, and you'll consider the different ways we can protect groundwater and surface water. First, I'll give you a better understanding of ERWP and the work we do. Then we're going to dive a little bit deeper and explore the important alluvial aquifer and its significance along the Elbow River. And lastly, we'll explore different ways that we can protect the alluvial aquifer and water quality. The Elbow River Watershed Partnership is a non-profit, non-governmental watershed stewardship group. Our goal is to promote a healthy watershed, and partnerships are integral to achieving this goal. We incorporate local knowledge and scientific expertise to promote watershed management improvement through collaborative, targeted, and cost-effective actions by citizens and stakeholders. ERWP success is built upon the knowledge, expertise, and passion of its members and stakeholders within the Elbow Watershed. In order to achieve our goal, we work with numerous organizations and run a variety of programs. We offer a field study for grade 8 and 9 science classes. Students spend the day outside along the Elbow River and perform a number of scientific tests to learn more about water quality. We explore how different land uses like agriculture, recreation, industry, and municipalities may impact the landscape and in turn impact the quality of water. One of the things we try to highlight to students is that we are so close to our headwaters, where the river begins. We have access to some of the cleanest drinking water in the world, so how can we ensure it stays that way? In 2020, we were unable to offer in-person programs, so the field study was adapted and turned into an interactive video. Students followed the Elbow River's journey, met industry experts, and made predictions about the health of the river. Our virtual field study was able to connect about 60 classrooms and over 1,500 students to the Elbow River watershed. We have also worked with partners on numerous restoration projects. For example, we partnered with Alberta Environment and Parks, Trout Unlimited, and Cows and Fish to prevent erosion, improve habitats, and reduce cattle and off-highway vehicle access to creeks like McLean Creek Public Land Use Zone. A mix of willow staking, woody debris structures, and cattle fencing was used. After a couple years of growth, many of the exposed banks were now densely covered with willows and grasses. We're seeing increased bank stability, which helps prevent erosion, and increased vegetation cover, which is critical for native species of fish like West Slope cutthroat trout. Lastly, we collect and share data. We have now completed an Elbow River State of the Watershed report, and we will be sharing some of our findings in this presentation. A State of the Watershed report is a snapshot of the health of the watershed. Some data is current up to 2018 and some up to 2020, depending on when the chapter was written. What is a watershed? I've used this term a lot, so I want to make sure we all have the same understanding. This is how it's explained to students in our freshwater field study program. A watershed is not just bodies of water. We want to consider the entire area of land that collects and drains water. When it rains or when snow melts, water reaches the entire landscape. It is also the greatest solvent. So it could potentially pick up nutrients or contaminants on the landscape and carry them to larger bodies of water. We like to use our hands as a mini watershed model. If you cup your hands and I pour water on them, where will that water go? It drains to the lowest point. Now, let's say you have some mustard on your hands from your lunch. If I dump water on your hand, that water will likely pick up that mustard and carry it to the lowest point as well. Watersheds are also connected. Large watersheds are made up of a bunch of smaller watersheds. Small watershed areas like McLean or Sylvester Creek exist within the Elbow River watershed. The Elbow River eventually flows into the Bow, so it exists within the larger Bow River watershed, which exists within the larger South Saskatchewan watershed. This means land impacts within small watershed areas can potentially impact the water quality of our larger bodies of water. In our freshwater field study, we use the phrase, the river is an expression of the landscape. 
All land impacts within the watershed have the potential to impact our water quality and quantity. This is especially important when we consider water quality and the alluvial aquifer. What is an alluvial aquifer? Let's break down that name. Alluvium refers to sediment that has been deposited by a river. Thousands of years ago, glaciers deposited loose materials like boulders, clay, rocks, gravel, sand, and silt throughout the valleys of the Elbow River watershed. Over time, as the glaciers melted, the finer sediment was washed away by the Elbow River, leaving behind coarser sand, gravel, and cobbles. Water quickly filled the spaces between these deposits and formed the aquifer. If you look at this image, we can see the surface water on the right, but we know that the cobbles on the left are saturated with water. So what happens to the alluvial aquifer can impact the surface water. They are inseparably connected. Now, water typically flows from an aquifer into the river. However, what would happen if the river level begins to rise? The water can flow from the river into the alluvial aquifer. So if there are developments on the alluvial aquifer, this may result in flooding. This area is also very important to mitigate the impacts of floods and drought. You can think of the alluvial aquifer like a sponge. When we have our seasonal high water in the spring, the alluvial aquifer acts as a buffer and absorbs the water. When we experience drier years, the alluvial aquifer acts like a backup reservoir and groundwater flows into the river. During the 2013 flood, the alluvial aquifer was already saturated with water and it had nowhere to go, so it flooded municipalities. In the summer of 2021, we experienced a drought, and because groundwater levels were low, we didn't have that natural reservoir, so river levels were lower than average. Where is the alluvial aquifer along the Elbow River? The Elbow River starts as a trickle at the headwaters of Bray Glacier. It doesn't look very big, considering it is the source water for over half a million people. At Ray Glacier, the steep slope and rocky terrain send that water downstream. The aquifer is very narrow here. As the river flows downstream and the landscape flattens, the alluvial aquifer gets wider, up to two kilometers in some places. If you compare the two images, it's easy to see how much wider the alluvial aquifer is at Redwood Meadows. Again, it's easy to forget about the river when we're standing on the alluvial aquifer because it's often covered in vegetation. Easy access to groundwater is great for plants. It is also important to consider that the Elbow River naturally shifts and changes over time, or it can shift quite suddenly, such as during a spring freshet. Despite our best efforts to manage the river, it may change course. We continue to learn about how to best live with these changing rivers. Communities recognize the importance of protecting the alluvial aquifer, not just for flood mitigation, but because the Elbow River also provides drinking water for over half a million people. In 2018, the City of Calgary completed the Source Water Protection Plan. It states that source water protection is the first line of defense to minimize the risk of drinking water contamination. Their vision is, our source watersheds continue to provide clean, high-quality water to the region through proactive stewardship and management. The goal is to be proactive and preventative, not reactionary, when it comes to protecting our water quality. The Source Water Protection Plan includes statements from stakeholders and traditional knowledge keepers. These quotes really stuck out to us. In our community, literacy is about understanding that everything is connected and acknowledging that sacred kinship. And wetlands and rivers are part of that sacred connection, and this needs recognition. If we acknowledge that the river and the alluvial aquifer have a vital role to play, we can allow these natural processes to take place and benefit from them. By ensuring our source water is protected, we ensure our drinking water is protected. By protecting our natural buffer, we better protect our communities from the impacts of flood and drought. The goals outlined by the City of Calgary Source Water Protection Plan also align with the goals of ERWP and other water stewardship organizations. Protect our source water with improved planning. Promote innovation and stormwater management. We're going to explore this one a bit more, but stormwater is a risk to drinking water contamination. The intention of storm drains is to remove water from roads and infrastructure, but sometimes there is no filtration or water quality testing that occurs. Most stormwater that enters storm drains goes untreated into the river. All river partners are integral to protecting our drinking water. The landscape is utilized in numerous different ways, residential, recreation, agriculture, industry, but all land management decisions consider the impact on water. The last goal listed is to involve the community through education and research. I think this is so important. By involving the community, you will hopefully inspire stewardship. The freshwater field study that we operate with grade eight and nines are so impactful because these students are making a physical connection to their drinking water and exploring how science is used to tell the river story. By connecting to our drinking water, they will hopefully feel a stronger sense of value for the Elbow River, and by finding value in it, hopefully they are more inclined to protect it. 
As I mentioned earlier, stormwater presents a large risk to our water quality. There is no way to mitigate or know exactly what is entering our waterways through storm drains. Some of the biggest risks associated with stormwater is pollution from current or future land developments. Stormwater quality is highly variable and shows significant spikes in pollutants in an unpredictable manner. Pollutants or nutrients from spill events or runoff after severe storms can negatively impact the water quality. It's very easy to add to the water system and can be incredibly difficult to take things out. Some contaminants cannot be treated effectively in our water treatment plants, and current regulations and best practices do not address these contaminants effectively. As municipalities grow, temporary impacts to water quality during construction were also identified as a secondary concern. With growing communities, we're also seeing increasing volumes of treated wastewater upstream from city limits. The goals of the City of Calgary Source Water Protection Plan and ERWP is to ensure that the source watershed of the Elbow River will continue to provide clean, high-quality water to the region through proactive stewardship management. Two of the City of Calgary Source Water Protection Plan's goals related to stormwater management are innovation in stormwater management to protect source water quality and to promote partnerships and stewardship objectives with respect to risk mitigation. This image is a snip of one of the State of the Watershed online maps. The green triangles represent dwellings, and the red squares represent dwellings on the alluvial aquifer. As recommended in the City of Calgary Source Water Protection Plan, we promote innovation in stormwater management to protect water quality and involve the community through education and research. Avoid building and placing stormwater infrastructure, such as ponds, in the alluvial aquifer whenever possible. For existing infrastructure, stormwater management can include the development of stormwater ponds and associated pretreatment stormwater retention ponds, reuse of stormwater, and bioswales. Protecting natural areas and wetlands helps filter and remove contaminants and runoff, preventing them from entering the aquifer. Provincial guidelines help developers and land managers ensure aquatic ecosystems are protected when developing near bodies of water. Stepping back from the water acknowledges that municipalities play a key role in the management of aquatic ecosystems. Some of the factors considered include risk of groundwater contamination, flood hazards, shoreline migration, and the impact of slope. The handbook emphasizes the conservation of the lush green buffers of land directly adjacent to lakes, rivers, streams, and wetlands. More information on stepping back from the water can be found at aep.alberta.ca. As I mentioned earlier, water typically travels from the alluvial aquifer into the river. But when the river level rises, the flow of groundwater slows down and can be reversed sending water from the river into the alluvial aquifer. If you compare the two maps, you can see that the areas most vulnerable to flooding are within the alluvial aquifer. If we protect the alluvial aquifer from land impacts, it provides us with a natural buffer during our seasonal high water and acts as a backup reservoir during drier seasons. After the significant flood event in 2013, the University of Calgary's Department of Geoscience conducted a survey of 189 homes along the Elbow River in the city of Calgary. 34% of the home survey could not determine if the initial route of entry was overland flooding or groundwater. In homes where the initial route was known, 88% were initially flooded by groundwater, and 12% were exclusively flooded by groundwater. 19 home survey were not within the provincially established 100-year flood zone, but it was determined that groundwater flooding was the initial flood type in all 19 homes. Groundwater flooding can occur beyond map flood zones, wherever an, an alluvial aquifer extends beyond those map zones. The report states, The significance and nature of groundwater flooding in permeable river-connected aquifers should be considered in flood mitigation policy and infrastructure. For example, berms, dikes, and other local structures designed to mitigate overland flow would not eliminate the risk of groundwater flooding. Similarly, homes that were groundwater flooded prior to being overland flooded would have been flooded even in the absence of surface water flooding. About two-thirds of homeowners surveyed considered the flood risks when they decided to live on a floodplain. 82% 82 82 said that they would reconsider living on a floodplain if they were to move. For more information, you can find this article at onlinelibrary.wiley.com. Allen Bill Pond is a great example of how the river changes. The pond was man-made with the intention of providing recreation and fishing opportunities. The 2013 flood completely washed out the infrastructure and released non-native species of stocked fish. Instead of rebuilding the pond, this area is now left alone. The river is able to shift and change as needed, and the reclaimed place is ideal habitat for native species of fish. The most effective way to avoid the effects of floods on land use is to avoid building structures within areas prone to flooding. Over half a million people rely and personally benefit from a healthy Elbow River watershed. 
There are numerous land impacts that have the potential to impact the water quality, so partnerships are vital to ensuring communities within the watershed have access to clean drinking water. Measures should be taken to improve the health of the watershed, and these actions should be proactive, not reactive. One of the main objectives of the freshwater field studies is to get students to think about the river we don't see. It's important to consider our impact on the alluvial aquifer because of the significant groundwater-surface water interaction. A healthy alluvial aquifer improves the health of the river and protects our drinking water. Thank you so much for your time today. Hopefully you all feel a stronger sense of connection to our drinking water, and you have considered how land impacts may disturb the natural processes of the alluvial aquifer, which is vital to maintaining a healthy watershed and ensuring future generations have access to the same water quality. I'd also like to quickly thank some of our grant supporters for helping us complete the Elbow River State of the Watershed Report, which is now posted on erwp.org. Huge thanks to Alberta Ecotrust, Bow River Basin Council, Calgary Foundation, Casino Volunteers, United Nations Associations in Canada, Green Spaces Program, Land Stewardship Centre, Water Stewardship Grant Program, Rocky View County, and the City of Calgary Water Resources. If you have any questions, please check out our website or email us at coordinator at erwp.org. Thanks again.